Hi, this is a recap or an errata of uh, video number two, which is the displacement current caper. I produced a new version of the displacement current, and I got a lot of feedback because I realized that there was a kind of a confusion in the way the information was presented. So what I'm going to do with this video is do a quick, really quick overview of what was described in the video. I'm not going to go into any high level detail, and I'm going to give you a little bit of additional information to hopefully clarify it. Um, so this is, is for all audiences, not just science and engineers. So I'm not going to go into mathematical detail here. I'm just going to give a quick overview of what was in video 2B. Again, uh, in video 2B we showed that Maxwell's displacement current term is gibberish and consequently the plane wave equation is bunk. Okay, the displacement current term is needed for Maxwell's plane wave derivation, which is the model for light that's been accepted for the past hundred and some odd years. And the, again, the comments of the video helped me re realize there's confusion in the way things were presented. This video will briefly overview with additional and more details to clarify. So again, displacement current, that's just the term that Maxwell gave for the capacitive coupling across the capacitor in his thought experiment, which I'm going to show next. And through this, Maxwell supposedly unified electricity magnetism in the addition of the displacement current term, that's what this is called, which is really just a, a euphemism for capacitive coupling, or changing flux line, whatever. So what is it? What Maxwell did is he took a, a little experiment here of a loop of wire with two capacitive plates and he drew an imaginary barrier here and he computed the changing electric field lines across the capacitor to show that the rate of change of the electric field line is equal to the current in the wire. And if I want to show that in point form, that's uh, the curl of H is equal to um, J. Okay. Oh, sorry. DD dt in the gap and cross h is equal to j in the wire. And then that's where he was able to put those two things together to say that this is in fact all of the contributors to a magnetic field. It's both the current in the wire and the electric field changing across a gap in the capacitor both contribute to a magnetic field. But where's the problem? This problem, I'm showing you that it doesn't really matter where you draw the line. And let me show you with more detail around the capacitor. In the, in the video, I said, well, gee, you know, we drew the, the magenta line here. But, you know, there's really gaps between all the atoms in the copper, too. Okay? So it doesn't really matter where I draw the magenta line. Okay? And then in the video, I, I picked a point out here. Okay? Well, first I showed you the, 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 how the capacitor works with the two charges. Then I took the, the two atoms over here and showed you using this diagram here, these two are pretty much a blow up of these two which I forgot to mention in the video. And then I showed how these charges move, how that can create the dd dt, the change in electric flux about a moving charge. Okay, then what I forgot to do is I forgot to tell you that I have a complete derivation for this and the derivation for this if you go to www.cinti.com docs, there's a document in there, and you can, you can browse this, okay? So you don't have to type in the full URL. Just type this in and look for displacementdilemma.pdf. The derivation is very long and elaborate, and I, I thought I was going to make a video to demonstrate the derivation, but it's so long and arduous, and I really want to go forward. I don't want to go backwards. The derivation in the, in the document is fine. If you have the desire to go through it, it starts on section 1.2.1. The conclusion for the overunity is made at the top of page 14, which is section 1.2.3, and the conclusion that the real current is the only contributor of the magnetic field is at the bottom of page 15. Note, this paper was written over 20 years ago, where I still called things laws, and I was a little bit younger, a little bit more pissed off that what they taught me in college wasn't right, and I was a little, little more condescending, uh, so you know, be aware of that. Okay, but I'm not going to reproduce a video on that. That's going to be a complete snore, and I'd rather go forward than backwards. So, in the next part of the video, I show a derivation which, is, which gives me the same answer, which is based on a completely different derivation, but I get the same answer. I use Gauss's law to show that the... This is Gauss's law, and I did a derivation to show that the changing flux around a current, electric flux, is dd dt. Okay, so the, uh, the current in the wire also produces a DDDT, a changing electric field. So if we take Maxwell's original 
wonderful thing that he did, which I think is complete gibberish, and we, we replace this with this, we end up saying that, well, gee, if I look anywhere in a real conductor, the magnetic field contribution is twice the current in the wire, which means the magnetic field is twice what we should measure, which is wrong. This is over a unit. This result is unacceptable. Okay, if we put current in a wire, we measure the magnetic field, it's going to be not twice the current, uh, the effect of the current, but once the effect of the current. So then the question becomes, well, which is it? Is the magnetic field contributed by J, the actual real current, or by the electric flux caused by the current in motion? Can't be both, because then we get over unity. So next in the video, I showed a dipole example to show you that only J can be the cause of the electric field, the real current, not the changing flux lines. Only the real current can cause the magnetic field. Oops, that's not supposed to be there. So the loss of the displacement current term okay, means that Maxwell's model for light, the plane wave equation, is bunk. It's completely invalid. Okay, he needed this part to be able to show the plane wave equation. So that's pretty much the whole video in a nutshell in, in like under five minutes to give you the whole idea of what's going on. Okay, I'm sorry for the confusion there because I went from the conceptual example right into a derivation and a lot of people were trying to figure out how the derivation and the conceptual explanation matched. Sorry about that. That was a, that was a confusion. But those, two of those, those, both those examples I showed, when you do the math, they can both come up with the same answer that you, can, you cannot have the current in the wire contributing both the magnetic field from the current and from the changing flux lines of the current, otherwise you get over unity. Thank you very much.